Hi, it's John Kelly. In this module, we are going to discuss Section 800, Audit Considerations When Auditing Financial Statements Prepared in Accordance with a Special Purpose Framework. And as always, we want to be efficient and effective, follow professional standards, and document what we have done properly. Now, the big concern when there's a special purpose framework being used for financial statements is that users may misunderstand and think it's a general purpose framework like, for instance, IFRS, and because it's not, they may become confused. So the big differences here are at the front end, the auditor is to consider if the framework is appropriate. Does it make sense in the circumstances or is it inappropriate and should a general purpose framework be used? In the middle, doing the audit, it's much the same as any other audit assessing risk of material misstatement and designing procedures to respond to that. The back end, when we are reporting, we are going to make very clear in our report so the users don't misunderstand that we're using a special purpose framework to do the financial statements. So, much discussion about is the framework acceptable? Is the purpose appropriate? Who are the users? Are the statements going to be appropriate for the users? Is it acceptable in the circumstances? And this is often going to be specified by a contract. A contract is going to say financial statements are to be prepared in accordance with the following special purpose framework. An example I've sometimes seen is the government decides to provide a mortgage to provide housing either to senior citizens or low-income folks, and it's going to specify. Here's how the rent is going to be calculated, and it's going to be calculated based on financial statements, and the financial statements are going to, I don't know, have depreciation equal to the reduction in the mortgage principal. And maybe there's going to be a reserve fund, and there's going to be other things where the government says in providing the mortgage, here is how the financial statements are to be prepared. Now, is the purpose appropriate with that framework? Well, of course, we're responding to a contractual requirement. Who are the users? Well, the users are the tenants. And of course, that the, the, uh, the special purpose framework would be the only framework that they're interested in because that's how their rent is calculated. The board of directors, same thing. The government, same thing. They've required that this framework be used and presumably in the circumstances we would conclude it's acceptable. The only users that I can think of would want this framework to be used. So special considerations and they compare and contrast. They say in an ordinary audit we are considering common needs of users as a group. We've kind of invented a synthetic user of financial statements and that is the person the auditor is thinking about when setting materiality. When you're in a special purpose framework we know who the intended users are and we know their specific needs so that may influence our judgment about what is material because we have a more specific understanding of the users. Another important part of the understanding is often these special purpose frameworks are specified by people who are not accountants, shall we say, and they haven't been clear enough about all of the requirements of the framework. And that means that management is going to have to make some interpretations of what the contract, for instance, means. And as auditor, when that happens, and indeed for management, the very, very best thing to do is err on the side of more disclosure. Tell people exactly what you're doing. Tell people exactly the interpretations that have been made by management. And if the users disagree, the government or someone will come back and say, well, you know what, that's a very interesting interpretation and I can understand why you did it that way, but no, we're in charge of this, we're in charge of the contract, and here's the way we want it done. So that would be fine. When we get to the reporting phase, we're going to be very careful to describe the framework. 
and the auditor is to evaluate if interpretations have been adequately disclosed and again to protect both the auditor and management it's very important that that be done there is some thought that maybe the intended purpose and who the users are should be described that's a maybe you don't have to you might consider doing that it may be that management has a choice it may be there's two things they could have equally done and they've picked one over the other and if there's a choice we would refer in the report to the fact that it's management's responsibility for making that choice and then finally we will have an emphasis of matter paragraph with a heading that's specified carefully noting the framework that is being used now there is an example of the form of the report and often when we're doing using a standard form of auditor's report unmodified you can almost photocopy the example in professional standards and use it with very minimal changes though with the new form of report we have to be a little more careful because there are other things we might have to do in this case it's particularly important to not just try to photocopy the report you need to follow both the report in the appendix and the requirements and the form of report in the appendix is followed figuratively not literally if you get the point so thanks for listening